Can you touch on the difference between open and closed and, and rights of accumulation? Uh, I certainly can. I have a, a, a slide. Uh, if you put that into the, the channel search bar, I have an entire carve out video of 10 minutes. It has a slide that I think is so target rich. It's the most target rich slide I have on the channel. And it just puts open end and closed end side by side and goes through them. The biggest testable distinction is closed end funds trade supply and demand, not based on NAV. They could be trading in, in the secondary market, New York or NASDAQ, above the NAV, below the NAV. An open end fund would never be trading below its NAV. Open end funds are continually offering new shares to the public. I mean, they got to comply with the Investment Company Act of 1940, as well as 33. And their test question is going to be the NAV plus the sales charge equals the public offering price. So there's never going to be an open end fund that is, you're going to be able to get for less than its NAV. Now, a fund, a, a mutual fund, an open end mutual fund typically has breakpoints, point discounts. Starting, I like Costco. Costco has breakpoints, point discounts. I go, man, I don't need two tons of salsa, but it's so cheap. You're getting a discount because you're buying in bulk. Uh, I started out starting as a retail broker, and I ended up as an institutional broker. But when I was a retail stockbroker, I sold a lot of the Franklin Temple Group funds. That was kind of my go-to move. I'd say, hey, Dr. Sterling, are you interested in tax-free income? Now I'd like to share with you the Franklin California Tax-Free Fund. And I'd say, hey, doctor, if you invest $100,000 or more, you pay a 3% load instead of a 4% load. Franklin offers breakpoints. Varies from fund to fund to stipulated prospectus. The doctor says, well, Dean, I have $80,000. I said, well, $80,000, uh, Dr. Sterling, it looks like you're going to pay a 4% load. You know, and you say, I say, do you think in the next 13 months you can come up with another 20? Because if so, we should fill out a letter of intent. He says, no, nope, there's no way I'm going to do that. I said, well, let's at least get you rights of accumulation. With rights of accumulation, you're going to pay 4% of the 80 and you're getting no rebate. But when you do cross the break point on that and all subsequent investments, you get to reduce sales charge. Right? So letter of intent, I'm saying, tell me you're going to be a good customer. I'll treat you as if you were one. Rights of accumulation, I say, prove it. So the distinction between a letter of intent and rights of accumulation is with rights of accumulation, you don't get the reduced sales charge on the initial investment. You get no rebate on that. Done. But when you do cross the break point and all that, on that, on that and all subsequent investments, you get the reduced sales charge. Uh, I had a guy, Sterling, that <laughs> sold coffee. He had a coffee cart below my apartment in San Francisco. When I was a broker, I lived at a penthouse apartment. And below there was a guy in a coffee cart, which I kind of like him. And they go, here's a guy with a coffee cart competing against Starbucks. And, you know, anyways, he had rights of accumulation, Sterling. You know, he had a little thing. And every time I'd buy a cup of coffee, he'd punch my card. And when I bought 10, I got a free one. That's rights of accumulation. I don't get the 10th coffee cup until I, or the free coffee cup until I buy the first 10. Anyways, I said, you know, uh, you should switch from rights of accumulation to a letter of intent. Why don't I just tell you right now I'm going to buy 10 and you give me the free one up front? And he said, well, Dean, how would I enforce that? I mean, how would I be able to? I said, well, a mutual fund, they, you know, take the additional share sterling and put it in an escrow account. If you don't fulfill the letter of intent, we back flag it. Anyways, that was funny. I forgot my wallet. And I came down, you know, and I said, oh, man, I forgot my wallet. He goes, Dean, we're going to do it your way. This one's on me. I said, woohoo. I got him to change from rights of accumulation to a letter of intent, right? I get the free one up front. 